Uh, so I have a couple points that are uh, just repeating what was said earlier, so I'll zip over those uh, quickly, but it's this distinction between search engines and search ads. Search engines, you have general purpose search engines like Google and Bing and DuckDuckGo and so on, or you can have, and those are typically ad supported, or you can have special purpose search engines. So Amazon is really a search engine, a product search engine, so is eBay. Uh, Yelp, Travelocity for searching uh, tourist-related information and so on. And those are sometimes ad-supported, sometimes donations like Wikipedia and so on. Now, the basic way that search ad models work is advertiser chooses keywords and the user chooses queries. So if the keyword matches the query, then the ad is eligibly shown. And so advertisers basically define the relevant keywords that they're interested in. They want customers who are looking for, I don't know, frying pans, then uh, they're going to show ads for, for frying pans or cooking equipment of, of other sorts and so on. Now, there's really very minimal personalization in uh, search ads. Uh, you can filter by demographic information like lo location, age, gender, and so on. But actually, we recommend that you uh, downweight the uh, demographic information and really focus on uh, discerning the user's intent. That's the critical issue for uh, making the search ads work. Uh, the ad prices are determined by an auction. That's not really all that relevant uh, to uh, what we've talked about so far. But it's a method that weights both quality of the ad, meaning relevance in this case, and the bid for the ad in order to determine what to uh, show uh, individuals. And uh, back in 2000, when this was first uh, created, 2002 actually, uh, the, uh, the ad ranking was very simple. Now it involves a number of other post-click measures of, uh, of how good, how relevant the ad is, such as bounce rate and dwell time and so on. Um, so I will then talk a bit about uh, general purpose search. And there in general purpose search, we want to distinguish between commercial search and non-commercial search. And the simple point that all economists will recognize is uh, the commercial search is where the money is. Uh, there's lots of places that provide product search, either on site or as a, another service. And uh, that's what people will uh, pay for. That is ads that are uh, of a commercial, uh, commercial nature. Now, that was the search ads. Let me talk a little bit about display ads. And I'm going to address this point of, of convergence, how, uh, whether they're separate markets or, well, not whether they're separate markets or, or one market, but at least some points that are relevant to that, uh, that question. Uh, those are ads that appear in third-party content. Uh, about 80% of display ad revenue is negotiated, as we heard from Simeon. He didn't mention that exact uh, number, but uh, roughly 20% use an open auction, and that's going down, projected to be 15% in the next, uh, next couple of years. So it's a relatively small segment of the display ad uh, market, and of course, it's dominated by Facebook, as we already uh, heard. And there, a publisher makes space on the page available for ads. The ads are provided by some ad network. What are the targeting methods? And this is really a very important point because there, is a, there, there are several different ways you can target these display ads. You can have no targeting at all. And that's what we call run of market. Uh, there can be contextual ads. Those would be relevant to the topic of the page. You might go to a page, there's a lot of bicycle terms, then we classify that page as a bicycle page. Uh, or it could be keywords, spe spe certain words that appear on the page. That's contextual targeting, has nothing to do with personalization. Third kind is reminder ads or remarketing or retargeting. They go by various names. This would be sites or products you looked at recently. So everybody's had this experience of going to a website, looking at some product, and then that product kind of follows you around the web. Uh, because you showed an interest in it by visiting this website and seeing this, uh, this product. So the reminder ads are a form of intent. It's not as strong as the intent when you're searching for something, but it says, well, you're probably interested in this product because you visited a website and examined that product. 
And that's based on merchant data. That's not actually based on Google data or the search engine data. That's based on the fact that the merchant saw this party enter their website and then they set a cookie and then later on that uh, person would see ads for that website uh, using this retargeting uh, technology. Now users can go to ad settings to see, edit, start, stop, do whatever they want, opt out entirely of any kind of personalized uh, ad. Uh, and the advertiser can go to the audience targeting section to see what kinds of targeting are available uh, for their site. And the site that does use individual information is, uh, sorry, the kind of, of targeting that does use in, uh, individual information is interest-based ads. Uh, so if you're visiting a lot of sites about bicycles, then you will see bicycle ads even on third-party sites that have nothing to do with bicycles because you've shown this interest in it. And that's something that uh, is, uh, is quite important uh, for newspapers, and I'll talk about that in a second. So um, search ads, just a review. That's based on current or recent search behavior. Uh, display ads, those are ads based on recent website visits. In-market ads, which we heard alluded to earlier, those are ads that are based on recent purchase intent, as indicated by visiting um, places where they're selling products of a certain nature, such as bicycle products. Um, so the um, important point about the search ads and display ads is recent. The search ads based on recent search behavior, retargeted based on recent website visits. In market ads, you're exhibiting purchase uh, shopping-like behavior recently. And what matters much more than having a long and detailed history is having a solid uh, indication of what the user is doing now, because recency is everything. And this, this I think, goes back to David's uh, point about uh, interest, about um, uh, uh, not about interest, but about uh, your uh, giving, paying attention. And attention is something that really is concerned with uh, with recency. Um, Behavior targeted ads. Let me say a word or two about newspapers on this. Newspapers never made money from news. They made money from these things like shopping, travel, home and garden, automotive, finance, entertainment, and so on. And you could have contextually relevant ads. On the automotive page, you'd see ads for automobiles. On the finance page, you'd see ads for financial services and so on. And so revenue from that contextually targeted information it was used to cross-subsidize the actual production of news. Now along comes the internet and now there are thousands of automotive sites. There are thousands of shopping sites and travel sites and home and gardens and so on. And so uh, the uh, users go to those sites and that cross-subsidization model that I described for newspapers really breaks down. That's one of the big problems that they've been facing. One solution, not the only solution, but one solution is to use more of this behavior targeting where the ads are based on past behavior, like visits to bicycle site sites, not just only what you're doing now. And you'll see that. That's uh, when, you, when you can't do contextual targeting, uh, then uh, you would do targeting based on past behavior. And that past behavior would generally have to do with the uh, uh, what kind of interest you've, uh, you've shown. And I'm going to skip that. I'm going to skip that. And I think that will end my talk. Thank you.